Hello and welcome to the Tarkus Zone. Today I'm going to be talking about the game Revelation Online. In the last few videos I have done, I've been actually talking about the uh, game manufacturer's website and the content that they have provided on their website. And today I'm going to be talking about a website that I've used in the past for other games. It's D-U-L-F-Y dot net. And when you go to this website, you'll see that they have a few games that they have information about. What you'll be looking for on their main page is you want to scroll down to Re Revelation Online. And what I'm going to be pointing you to is the new is their um, new player guide. Here it is, Online New Player Guide. So click here. And if I'm boring you at this point, then you're going to be bored for the rest of this because we're really just going to go into this um, information. And I was going to talk about this information. And if you're one of those people that, gee, I can just go to the website and check it out for myself, you can pause this video, stop this video at this point and go do that uh, because I've given you the information how to get here. But I want to go over it and kind of just pick out the things that I thought were interesting and to actually kind of point newer players that are thinking about this game um, to this because this it does give you quite a bit of good information it's information in addition to what the game uh, manufacturer website uh, gives you so here we go uh, one of the interesting things about the um, right here off the game basics this caught my eye that it, it, it's you know it has action combat dungeons raids and then 3v3 arenas i think i was talking about that before about them having um teams in arena to kind of balance out uh the pvp aspect but they also have battlegrounds that are 10v10 20 versus 20 and 30 versus 30. and they got territory guild wars on top of that and open world pvp i'm gonna probably think that they'll have a PVE server where you can actually flag on that server to get in a PVP and then they'll actually have a PVP server that regardless of your level maybe after 40th level you become eligible to be attacked at any time. I typically like PVE servers with the choice of, of flagging up and attacking somebody. I do not like PvP servers only because you've got people that will troll you. You're trying to do storyline content and they're just sitting by the boss that you need to kill for your storyline and killing you every time you walk up. I mean, that, that gets uh, discouraging quick. So let's hope, you know, we don't see that many trolls in this game, but you never know. So let's keep on going down here it says that the China version of this game its level is 79 that's the hard cap I guess and it looks like the closed betas that will be doing they're capping that at 49 uh, or we might even see it capped at 59 at launch which you know that gives you some room to really uh, grow your character 59 levels is it pay to win? I talked about it in the other um, video I did. And at this point, I don't think it really is pay to win with their current, my current understanding of their business model. But even this site is accepting the fact that we don't know. Game options. Tab targeting is, is nice. It's like World of Warcraft. Action combat. That is more like Elder Scrolls Online. And Mouse the Move. Now these are options you can turn on. You don't have to do action combat if you don't. If you just like tag, tab uh, targeting, then you target that uh, that mob, and then you then you attack that mob. Where action combat, there's no tag. You know, you basically are running around almost like in uh, first person shooter mode. Um, you know, and you have to actually aim a cursor or an, uh, a a cross or whatever you want to call it on the mob for you to attack that mob. I can see that that being very um, fun to do if you're a DPS class, but if you're a tank or even a healer, a tab targeting is the way you got to get going because you got to you got to make sure that you're always um, you know, 
on the mob. If you're a tank, you got to be on the mob that you got to hold aggro on. And if you're a healer, then you got to be able to tab onto the tank so that you can, you know, heal the tank. So, you know, it's going to be your choice and what uh, works for you. So I won't spend more any more time on that. It says what class should you pick? You can go to their website, the uh, game, you know, the Revelations uh, Online's uh, website, and get this information. And you can see the videos about this. So I'm going to scroll over this, and then it comes down to what race should I pick? And this is a nice little chart. And I'm going to be a Vanguard. I know that. So it does tell me, you know, these are my options. It looks like I've got four options. I can be a male, uh, a buff-looking male, normal-looking male, normal female, and this low eye. Low, I think I'm, I'm saying that right. And you're probably scratching your house, your head's thinking, you know, what's uh, what's that actually mean? What's that look like? Well, they have it right here. This is the buff-looking male normal looking male so you'll be able to see that what what I like about it is is they're not gender specific these classes which is nice like in uh, Black Desert Online if you want to be a Valkyrie you gotta be a female I have no problem playing a female character but I like aesthetics to my uh, my characters I like to be able to put items on my characters so people can see and look at them and say ooh fancy fancy and you can't really do that in Black Desert Online if you're a Valkyrie because you're so sleek and small and you just kind of blend into the, the environment. I mean, and no matter what you do, if you go by and get this epic looking shield, it looks like this little mini thing on the Valkyrie's arm. It just didn't make any sense. I did not like that as part of that game. But it looks like here they're going to allow you to choose male, female, and then you're actually going to have, you know, aesthetics so that people will be able to see you know what you've got on character customization meaning that if you choose you know male valkyrie you'll be able to customize what that male valkyrie looks like or even in this case they've got female uh pictures here for you to see so it looks like it's it's not going to be cookie cutter meaning that you'll be able to create a unique looking character a uh, character and then people will be able to look in game and say, oh, that's Tarkus because he looks like a dumbass or whatever. And this way, two people aren't going to always look the same. And, and that's pretty cool. It goes over the game interface. Obviously, it's got the the uh, hot, hot bars here at the bottom. So you'll be able to put uh, abilities in those hot bars. Well, let's keep on going down that auto pathing if you have played black desert online you know what auto pathing is and you know that's that's nice and that and in black desert uh, online what you would do is you would click anywhere on the map and then hit the T key and then you just go there so that's very nice especially if you got to go long distances this is the world map it does uh, talk about waypoints here the game features waypoints, much like the system in Guild Wars 2. So in Guild Wars 2, if I remember correctly, you could actually transport to any waypoint you wanted to go to. And it cost you, I think in that game it was platinum or gold. So if I wanted to go to point A to point B, or, you know, career across the world to another waypoint, it might cost me 10,000 gold because the distance was large. Here they're talking about uh, blue orb objects. Uh, and other things that you can find in the open world that allow you to do it. So that's nice. And some people are saying, well, what's the point of having mounts and being able to fly around if you can just teleport? Well, if they've balanced it, uh, whereas, you know, you, you're sitting to yourself, well, do I want to blow 10,000 gold to teleport me there, or do I just want to get on my horse for five minutes? I mean, there people be balancing cost concerns. And then, on the positive note, you, your, your guild's trying to put a raid together, right? And they're like, well, Tarkus, you're on the continent where nobody goes, and we need your butt over here. Well, it's be nice to be able to, you know, teleport Waypoint to their location and, and, and be able to help them with their raid. And this allows 
for guilds to not have to like preset time saying, look, you better get here at 7.30 because we're going at 8. And you always got that one person that shows up at 8. Well, if he's clear across the world and you're ready to go, that just destroys the, you know, the, the continuity of being able to do your raids in a timely fashion. And I know you're saying to yourself, well, people just need to be, you know, uh, online when they're supposed to be online. Well, this is real world, guys. I mean, human beings, you want to take 20 people and ask them to be on, you know, on time at the same time, you know, you're going to roll the dice there. You're going to get 80% of your people that will show up on time. And the reality here is with the waypoint system, that person that doesn't show up on time can get to you timely. All right, so the uh, character sheet, it's part for the course. You know, it looks about the same as any other um, character sheet. Here it talks about main stats and secondary stats for your character classes. I'm going to be a vanguard. So these are the two that I have to, you know, it, this is cookie cutter. I mean, we all know this. I mean, anybody who's played Rift, anyone who's played World of Warcraft, or any triangle game where you need the uh, tank, DPS, and healer, these are the attributes that make sense. They just are calling them different things. A gunslinger, okay, well, that's the ranger that's in WoW. You know what I mean? So here it does talk, and these are basic numbers. My understanding is like a van, you know, if you've got uh, a tank class or you're a vanguard, that you actually will get more from putting points into this category than any other class, which kind of makes sense because you're a tank. But these are just the base numbers that, okay, if I put a point into this category, right, I'm going to get 29 hit points. And then if I get up to 10, okay points in that category it gives me this four brawn which gives one percent to physical armor so you can see how this works spirit dexterity okay this uh... This is they got a mechanic here that increases your experience game if you uh don't play the game so that when you log back in you can get experience faster so like world of warcraft if you like logged off in an inn and then logged out while you were logged out you would start banking experience bonus so when you did log back into the game it would say that you've got eight hours of of sleep time in the end that accumulates to X amount of XP bonus for the next you know three hours whatever you know whatever they did in that game this game is going to have a similar type of system where when you're logging when you log out you're not falling behind okay well, I guess I should just scroll down a little bit more here and this is how it's it looks like it scales it so these are the these are points that you get during that time that you're offline okay so let's just keep on going I don't want to bore you too much I just want to get through all of this skills and talents when the game comes out people are going to be able to you know tweak their character to a point where people will create builds and we've all seen them you go to a website and they've got a build for every class they've got a multitude of builds for that class and it comes down to how um, you play and what your play style is and obviously like in World of Warcraft there were builds that you had to have I mean your tank if you were a paladin you had to have these abilities you there was no questions asked and if someone asked you do you have that ability and you said no they boot you from the raid I mean th that was how um, fine-tune it became in World of Warcraft now to me that is good and bad more bad than good because what you're doing is you're forcing people to play um, in a talent tree that's not their play style and and it's unfortunately that that game went that way well I'm hoping with this game that you could have a multitude of different class options for the for your tanks Whereas you don't have to have X, Y, and Z to go tank for a dungeon or a raid. That you can kind of massage it and mold it 
to your play style. And that's what I enjoy about um, these type of games is early on, you can um, really get to know what the abilities are doing. And I don't know why my computer's thinking. I <laughs> see the spinning of the wheel. Uh, but like I was saying is you get to, as you're going up levels, you get to figure out which abilities work for you in your play style. And then when you get to cap level, then you know what all the abilities are doing. What was nice about Guild Wars 2 was you, when you went in a PvP environment, you could respec all your talents for free. So you could try them all and know what they do. So when you were in the PvE world, you can then say to yourself, well, geez, maybe I should tweak that aspect of my character too on the PvE side. All right, inventory. And I'm just generalizing here. I'm not really getting into... It looks like you can uh, destroy your gear. You don't need. Uh, and that will give you... Whatever these two items are here. Uh, I imagine they're, they're, they're needed in the game. You know, again, this is just their naming convention for things that we've pretty much seen in other games. When you destroy an I item, you get... You get this, and you get this. You destroy an item, you get this, you get this. You know, that's you know that's what you're doing with that mechanic. Uh, the bank and warehouse, it looks to be, um, you know, kind of vanilla it's as it was. I didn't read here if the if there's going to be a guild bank. I imagine there is going to be a guild bank, similar to uh, World of Warcraft and Rift. I know you got your own personal warehouse or bank. In this game, they call it a warehouse, I guess. Yeah, warehouse. Well, they've labeled it bank slash warehouse, but I think the game calls it a warehouse. Oh, and here is this. This is where it tells you what those items that you get. So you can read through here. Because when we, when, we, when we roll up here, you, the, you know, when you destroy an item... You could get this and you can get this. Well, this right here is this right here. And it tells you what it is. <laughs> so, so I guess, you know, you could just, you know, read this in detail if you want. I'm just skimming it. Okay, this is about auction house. All right. Leveling and dailies. This is nice information. This is what they're recommending you do for this player guide uh, between these levels. You'd read through here. For these levels, you'd read through here. And then dailies, they'll have uh, dailies that you can do, it looks like. Dailies reset at midnight. Pacific time zone. So that's good to know. You know, if you've gotten nothing out of this video, this is a pretty important one right here. So remember that. These are the, here are the dailies and how they get unlocked at your level. I imagine once you get up to here, you can do all of these dailies once a day. Where when you're at 20, you obviously only can do this one. That's yeah, a little self-explanatory. I guess I didn't really have to tell you that. Okay. Alright. Keep on going. Ooh, Hot Springs, level 25. Nice. Okay. This is still talking about dailies. And again, I'm just skimming this because I'm trying to pull the Easter eggs, the things that are important to know prior to game lines. Because this is stuff you're just going to absorb while you, you know, while you are um, playing the game. You'll absorb this information. I mean, it, unless you're playing and you're comatose and you're drooling on your keyboard or something. I, you know, I don't, I, you know, this stuff you'll get to know. Uh, guild dailies. So this is, is very nice that your guild can participate in their own dailies. And then obviously you're going to earn some sort of uh, reputation or you're going to learn, you're going to earn some, uh, some world uh, points, uh, whatever they call it. I'm trying to find it here, what, they, what they're going to be calling it. 
You also can get temporary buffs, it looks like. So if your guild goes out and does a mission, everybody in the guild now has, like, plus one gathering. Or, well, you know, I'm just kind of making shit up here. But I'm just putting that out there. Because I'm only... I only can tell you what I'm reading here. Um, but, yeah, it's similar to other systems. You know, the guild works together. They get a they get a global buff. But I, in other games, you get reputation, too. So that... Uh, you end up, you know, either being able to talk to NBCs you couldn't talk to before, or, you know, your reputation is scored by a global scoring system showing you which guilds are ahead of other guilds. Getting your wings. Look at that. Your basic wings unlock at 29. So there you go. You want to know that. Because you, when you get your wings, I imagine you can fly around, which will be pretty cool. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay, cool. So, this goes into the wing details. Okay, these orbs, they're a different type of currency. Yeah, this is going into different types of currency in the game. Because, you know, games do that. They'll have currency, which is your silver or gold that you use in the marketplace. Then they have abilities to get tickets for doing X, Y, and Z. Those tickets can get certain items and then they got orbs that you do get from doing something else and those orbs get you different items all games are like that it's just different types of currency within the game I'm just continuing to just scroll through here huh gold weapons wow this is a different type of weapons offhand sharpening gear once you've got a gold gear it's time to sharpen them by adding plus levels to them so they must have gear in this game and I was just go briefly going through there that uh once you know you get a certain type of gear, if you want to call it platinum gear, here they call it gold gear, and at that point you can start just enhancing it, similar to uh, Black Desert Online. Um, okay, so it's going to have a pretty robust crafting system, and this talks about sharpenings, what they, you know, what that's about. Again, you can get into this. I'm not a big PvP player, and I imagine this has something to do with that. Obviously, you're probably going to need, you know, some epic sharpening for uh, guild bosses, too. Then they've got these stones that you probably can slot in. You can slot pressure stones onto your gear, just like any other game. This is like vanilla. You can, you you know, I mean, you, your gear has three gem slots. You pick three gems to put in. Here, they're just showing you the inter interface and how to do that. All right, unlocking precious stones, gear awakening. This is end game. I imagine over 50th level. That's some good stuff. I imagine once you get there, but you probably will learn that in the game through the storyline how that works. Getting the rest of your gold gear. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm almost done. I'm not trying to bore you too much. Okay, making a guild. To make a guild, you need uh, to be level 30 and have 150k of these notes. So that must be their currency in the game. That's what they must call them in the game. It's to call it silver gold. They call them these glyph notes. Okay. And then you can start doing dailies once... Uh, once you get into the guild, and it, and it looks, and this is important, once you are level 30 and inside a guild, so you got to remember that you have to be a certain level, I think in this game it's 30, that's why we just saw a 30, 
to make a guild, you need to be level 30, but I believe you have to be level 30 to join it. No, no, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm reading it right here. Players need to be level 20 to join a guild. So, okay, that's 10 levels less. So you have to be 30 to make it, 20 to join it. So if you really want to get into your guild, then what you want to do is you want to rush to 20 so that you can get into the guild so you can at least start helping out with guild activities. All right. Demon slaying and PvP. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you can read all this on your own if you want to come back to this. I'm just trying to pull out the... Uh, wow, this is all PvP ranking. Wow. Some PV, people that like PvP games are going to really have fun in here. Military system. Wow. Okay, so it's another aspect of PvP. So it seems like it's like two different aspects of it. Wow. Okay, I think this is the end of it, and it is. So I'm hoping I didn't bore you too much. I uh, try to just go through that guide and pull the Easter eggs out. And, and you know, kind of just highlight what it was that uh, I thought would be crucial information that you needed before the game launched. Just to kind of get you into the thinking process of how this game's going to function. Well... I thank you for joining me. This has been the Tarkus Zone.